Welcome on everybody to Tuesday Tips on how to become better at your digital service for your ministry and your church. I'm Mickey Timey and today we're going to be hanging out with a one of our local pastors who's doing fantastic things in his area, Pastor David Moreno. He's at the Paramount SDA Church and today he's going to talk to us about uh, lighting because he's actually really good at it. He's got some great tips. So if you're just checking in with us, make sure you stick around to know how to do better lighting in your own home as well as in your church space. Um, David, how are you doing today, bro? Very good. Hi, Iki. Thank you for good. the opportunity. Yeah, man. Good to see you. I'm really glad you uh, are on here with us today. Now, you're going to talk to us about lighting, but how did you get good at lighting, man? <laughs> I think it's over the time uh, we started a, a, a TV ministry when I was pastoring in New York and I started reading and learning and practicing. I think it's a matter of practice like anything, no? Yeah, for sure. For sure. The I mean, of technology changes. Technology changes and then you have to relearn again. <laughs> Yeah, 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 it's true. And it's not like you took a class during your seminary time on lighting. They don't teach you that. So, well, thank you, brother. I don't want to take up too much more of your time, so I'm going to let you have it now. Go for it. Teach us about lighting, please. Okay. Well, um, let's start with the basic things of lighting and... Lighting, it's a frequency, the same as sound. So it can travel and bounce. And you can have feedback, like the sound um, and barriers and stuff like that. So we have to think the basic principles for lighting. I'm going to talk about how to light in the studio at the house that everybody's streaming. And then we can talk a little bit about in churches. So I'm going to share this slide. And the basic lighting principle is the three-point lighting. Uh, the key light usually doesn't go in front of the face. It goes on the, in an angle. Like you can see there. Let me put my face here. Okay. So that's the key light. And for example, right now I have a key light in a 30 angle of me. Some people put 40 or more. The angle makes the image more dramatic on the face. Usually you want some, uh, I'm gonna disconnect this one for a sec because I have too much feedback. Uh, usually you want some uh, shade on one side of your face um, because this gives some drama. If I put this light more here and I move here, you can see my face is more dark in one side. So um, the key light, it's, it's, the, it's, the, it's the most important. So it's better to put in an angle. The problem is that usually people are using the, the, the ones with the circular light that goes in, in front of the camera, and you cannot do that. But it's okay if you have all the light in your face, but usually that's the principle. Then you have the backlight, and then you have the fill light. It's on another angle, and it's softer. And so I'm going to turn on some lighting here so you can see what I mean with this. Let me change for a second. The other way to see it is like this. The same, the same three-point lighting system. Um, I think for preaching and for For presentations, it's it's more warm. It's better. It's it has better better way to light the, the when we talk when we preach. So in this slide shows the percentages even of the light. The the key light is the stronger one, 
the fill light is softer from the one side and the backlight is even softer and with, with the three cameras. Okay, so I'm gonna try to demonstrate what, I'm, what I mean with this. My key light is this one. If I turn it off, I go like that. So that's with no lighting at all. Uh, my key light, it's here. And then I'm gonna turn on uh, Oh, that's nice. A fill light, and it gives this color on this side. Then you have another light that is this lamp with no, with no shade, and gives an effect of deep, deepness. So you say how you say the distance. That when you do lighting in your in your office, you don't want to. You don't want to be like close to the to the wall. If you have a wall in your office on and in, in where you shoot in your living room, try to get away from the wall the the more that you can, the, because that gives the distance, and the more distance it gives this this space. Now with the lens of the camera, of course you can find the blurry, but it's a different topic. And so one of the 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 Tricks that I learned from the internet is this little uh, dimmer. This dimmer is only $10, $12 in Home Depot. You just connect any lamp and you can dim your light. So the problem sometimes is that you put a lamp that you like behind you, but it's too strong and it's taking too much on the, on the lighting. So with the dimmer, you just dim out soft around there i guess depends on your taste and this light usually they use the this this kind of orange light and the effect on your eye is like the eye can recognize the light but that light is not strong enough to fill the face so that's why i have this light on the side that I'm going to show you in a few. So uh, this is a good tip. Uh, so you can use any lamp at home and you can just dim, dim out the, the, the amount of, of the strength. So I have this one, then I have colors. I have colors of the lights uh, on, uh, connected on the, on the ceiling and to fill out in the back. If you don't have that option, you can put a lamp from home, any lamp that you have and, and try to aim the light towards the, the, the wall that you want to, to, to put. You don't wanna be too dark in the back unless you wanna go really dramatic. <clears throat> Other thing that I wanna mention is Try to use diffusers. Uh, they sell the diffusers like this, especially for lighting. So what a diffuser does is try to um, spread out the diffuse, the shadows. When you have a light uh, without, without diffusing, the shadow is gonna be really strong. When you have a diffuser, with this kind of material, with these papers, uh, what, what the diffuser does is it's gonna make the shadows really soft. So you wanna have soft shadows and that's why you use diffusers. If you, if you wanna buy, you go to Amazon, you can buy, they sell even pieces of cloth. So you can use this and, and give you a really nice uh, diffusing of the lighting. Uh, if you don't want to spend nothing, uh, you just want to use your lamps at home. You can uh, a piece of cloth, uh, not too close to the to the bulb, and or or uh, a pillowcase. E another option is if you have a stronger lamp, 
is to use any kind of white material and try to make the light bounce towards your face. So you put up the light aiming here and you put your face in front of this and you're gonna have a diffuse light in front of your, your face. The key on this is that it's not an easy, it's not a, an easy way to do it. I mean, you have to, it's not like just you set it up and then you sit and everything is nice. You have to move, move a little bit, a little bit. It's incredible. You move a light a little bit and everything changes. I'm, I'm trying to move my light and you can see how it changes the, well, I just moved the, the minutes ago, I, I moved it. And you can see how it changes the shadows on your face. So you have to be moving your face closer to the light and, and more away. And you see how it dramatically changes the, the shadows and everything. So you have to play with the lights in the back in front of you. And you're gonna see the differences that, that you can find. I don't know if you have any question until there, uh, Iki. Are we doing good? You're doing fantastic, man. Uh, it's, that's just great. Those are great tips. I love that dimmer you got. You said Home Depot? Yep. Wow, fantastic. Your lighting setup is great. Um, do you? So we saw different colors come down from your light. Was that different colors from the same light or do you have different colored lights up there? I have different colors. I'm going to change to my phone. Oh, you can put the camera on my phone. I am connected. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Here, well, I put on the, on the ceiling, these lights, these lights, the LEDs, um, are not that great. It helps to give color. The problem with the LEDs that are not designed for TV are that they have a different frequency. And I don't want to enter in that topic of, of frequencies with the camera, but you have to play with the shutter speed and sometimes you have lines. So when you buy a light for video, make sure that it's designed for video. And usually it's measured by Kelvin's and the standards goes from the 3200 to 5400. And those settings are important when you shoot video. But I use it. I play with the frequencies in order to have feedback uh, on, on lines and, and, and on, on, the, on the camera. But yeah, those are the LEDs. The LEDs are, are moved by, by the controller, the DMX that usually we use a church. The one I was mentioning to Iki was this one. I like that one because it's a light that it's designed for, um, for a streaming. You can change the colors on your phone. Let me see if I can do it right now. And Yeah, let me see. The good thing about this is, look, I'm changing just on the app, on my phone, the the color. So uh, remember in lighting, when, when you hear RGB, it means red, green, and blue. Uh, so when, when, when you see a lighting, when you buy a light and then they say, this light it has colors. And then sometimes the package comes and says has only two colors, like white and, and bluish or, 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 or yellowish. And you say, no, I want colors, real colors. So that means you need a light with RGB colors. But it's amazing, this little light, it's one light that you just saw up there. It's, it's only one <laughs> and, and it, it covers a lot because it's designed by that. That's a uh, Godox. It costs around sixty dollars, sixty-three dollars, and it's a good, very good option. I get, I'm, I'm thinking. Absolutely, David. If somebody wanted to set up, you, your lighting is fantastic. I saw that you even mounted a pole to the top. But if somebody wanted to get a key light 
a filler light and a backlight like that RGB, what would it cost them? You know, what would you suggest? Hey, start with this um, and th it may cost you this much. You, 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 uh, you mentioned Godox, which is a, a great company. They, they're pretty, they're pretty cost effective when it comes to equipment, right? Yes, it's true. In lighting, you can spend like $200 or you can spend $2,000. Um, Godox is a, is a decent brand. Uh, the pro brands are much, much, if you think that $200 is too much for a light, the basic key light that everybody is using right now, not everybody, but the most known is Aperture and it's around $1,200, 1200 <laughs> is right. the basic light. Right. And, but Godox is a good brand. It's a good option. For example, I bought this key light that I have, it's around 200 with a tripod, 240 with a tripod. It's a, it's a different system. It's a LED, but it's a different system. Uh, but it's it's really soft. It has a, the, 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 the deep, the deepness. So I would say for a key light around 200, if you want to do something, something decent, or you can go with something like this. Uh, many of you know about these umbrella lights. These are good, are softer, and the bulb, it's uh, its like a fluorescent. You, you can buy a cheap one for $60, and then you can upgrade the, 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 the bulb. That's a good option, too. The other option that you can have is something like this. Um... This is even cheaper. That's the other thing that I recommend. If you have nothing, buy a case like this. You put your phone here. You can put, you can put mount the light in front of you, and then you can have a microphone too. So you have different, different options. So I will say if he keeps saying about the price for a basic having the key light the back light i will say two hundred dollars 150. now you keep I'm mentioning fine. a soft light and a hard light um and you mentioned that the ring light that people are buying these circular lights aren't really good as your key light as your main light uh I, i'm i'm taking it because it's too harsh of a light and the key light you want it, it needs to be soft right is that what you're saying? Correct. Yeah, the, the, key, yeah. the key light is soft. Sometimes the, the, the ring already comes with the softness. Some kind of diffuser. Uh -huh. Yeah. I will I will add one of these papers or clothes if it's possible. You have to cut a circle for the camera to make it softer. And the softer the light, it's it's in that case is better. Right. For the for the key light. But you want really strong light for the key light then for the back you can use one of these and actually i have one here connected and yeah you can see the difference the color here mm -hmm. this is because of the of the the key light when you have white here and the light hits you in the back the the the, the backlight it helps you to separate yourself from the from the wall too you don't have too much space you need the key light and the key light it's it's well the three three point lighting it's basic yeah. um but here you can see the the all the setting with the with the lighting man your lighting looks so good i just want to i just want to point that out there um, you've got a real uh, a yellowish tint on that on that filler light that you have, and it makes it look like it's coming from the lamp in the back. But really, it's not. But it just gives it that that look, and it gives you separation. Correct. That's that's an effect that they do a lot of in in, in, in photos and movies, and because they, I, I forgot the name. There's a name for that. Mm -hmm. The effect that the eye recognizes the light, but you know you don't know. There's a big light hitting you with the with the orange. Uh, another thing I want to mention as a resource is this little light. 
it's uh i have it on i don't want to aim to the camera so i don't bother you so this little light is only 30 dollars on amazon oh, nice. it comes in a pair and you can use this as a as a I mean, you can use this as a light for yourself, or you can. I use it for to color. Um, I use it here for my wife. My wife helps on me on the on the on the streamings for church, so she has a different setup. And again, you can use an, an app on your phone, and you can change. Let me see how can I do this. I'm sweating here. <laughs> but don't worry, I'm not sweating because of the lighting, the lighting LED. I sweat because of my anxiety. <laughs> okay. Oh. Uh, but you see how it changed the color? I'm changing just yes. with my finger. So you can look any color. Um, RGB, it's a pair for $30. I think you cannot beat that. <laughs> wow. So that's basically $15 per light. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, when I saw it, I said, what? <laughs> I, I thought it was really cheap. And I like it. The casing is sturdy. It has a, a glass. It's, I think it's a glass in the top. Wow. Uh, it's really strong. And usually we're streaming from offices, from living rooms, you know. Yeah. Uh, and it's a very we, don't, space we don't have so much space. Right, so, right. In our, in our last few minutes, David, could you just share <clears throat> maybe... Uh, what people can do in their own churches. Uh, one of my, it's not a pet peeve, but one of the things that I noticed, because churches tend to be larger, a little bit cavernous, um, lighting isn't done so well in our churches, at least for streaming. We have enough light for, you know, when we're preaching or when we're there in service, but when you're streaming to get the right kind of light and balance, can you just share some tips and tricks about that for us? Yeah, in, in church, in church, the thing changes because of the distance. As I said, mm -hmm. lighting is a frequency. So, it because this looks just here. Look, look. This is my face. You can see all my sweating. If I get a little <laughs> bit, look one feet, two feet away. Look my, how it changes. Dramatically changes the whole the whole lighting. Right. Um, in churches, the problem is the distances. And sometimes we buy light and we want to flood the whole stage. So we can, you cannot do that with one light. And what I will recommend if you are in the situation that you want to do video at your church and the lighting is not that great, take measure, measure the, the stage measure the height of the ceiling, measure the, the width, the length. And once you have that, measure the area that we, you want to, to flood because the church is, is not a theater. So you, you want to, generally, you want to flood the whole thing, even with a flat light, like when you walk, when you preach, when you have a, a quartet or singers or more people or, the kids story you have more people participating so you want more flat with that in mind with the height of the ceiling and the and the measures of the stage i would recommend to call b and h b and h uh photo and video it's a company in new york it's one of the companies who sells more professional audio video equipment and they have a specialist there you you can tell them straight i i am for my church is these measures and I want a light to this and so and so. So they will give you uh, information and prices. You have to figure out your, your budget, how much you want to spend. And according to that, they can give you options. In church, the lighting is not like three point, but at least you can have two points. The field light again, and you want the backlight here. Usually that's the, the problem in churches that we don't use backlight. And if you can put some color on the walls, that would be nice. You can use these LEDs or, or different ones for colors. But the, the main thing is the distances. And uh, for installation, it's a different story because these lights and tripods works good at home, but at church, you cannot put a bunch of tripods in front of the stage. 
So then you need to think about rigging your lights from the ceiling. And, and then that's a different story. You need maybe a contractor or, or someone who understands that. But rigging is the one that put trusses and they hang with cables and they hold a lot of weight. Uh, you can hand your lights from there. But yeah, churches is a little bit more complicated uh, depending on your space. But you can, as you said, at least get uh, a fill light and a backlight. That backlight makes a big difference separating you on the stage, which if, if, you're, if you're a pastor and you want decent lighting for your streaming, consider that. You may not be able to put up a trust in, in the lighting system, but you can put a, a light maybe off stage somewhere that might shine in, right, David? They could do something like that that would help fill the light uh, ambiance. That's correct. That's correct at least a key light and again it depends the angle right. when you put a light in the church you put too low where some people put in the back wall and then the, yeah. the light hits in your eye and then you're like hey turn off that light you know <laughs> right uh you want a 45 angle at least something mm -hmm. always a front light is going to hit you something in your eye and actually it's good to hit you because when you have this the the, the white thing on your eye it looks nicer when there's nothing, it looks weird. Right. So you have to be aware that when you have a light in front of you, it's going to hit you in the eye a little bit. But you don't want it straight, but you want some angle. So that depends. That's why I was saying the height of the ceiling and what kind of light you want to put to. You know, it's, it's, right. it's, it's important. Again, it's not just any light. It's better for video. Video is more expensive. But the other day I was chatting with a pastor uh, from another church here in our conference, he was looking for that. And we found a good set. Uh, I think it was a three, four uh, kit set from e &H, and and they were, they were selling it. it. I think it's a very, very good option. Um, it's called BBS Lighting Compact Beaming in, in 4K for, for Kelvins. Um, it's a flat, it's a small, it's LED, it's designed for that, for that distance. And that's a, there's, there's good options for, for, for those things. So, and that basically that means you can point. shoot in 4K and the light will look very even and very, very regular, right? Otherwise, because of the frequency, it might look like the, the lights are flashing or waving a little bit. Okay, oh no, no, I read the 4K is for 4,000 Kelvins. Uh, ah, not, not got you. Four definition. Got it. Yeah, that that. yeah. The, the, as I mentioned, the frequency it's measured by that. The lower the number, like the thirty-two hundred, it's mm -hmm. more yellow, more orange. Got you it. go higher, fifty. Uh, I mean, five fifty-two hundred is 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 more white. Got it. More bluish. Got it. So you have to play with that. It and it's important since you're doing that and your lighting. Let's mm -hmm. say I put my lighting set up. Well, this has a remote and I put exactly the Kelvins that I want. But if I put that, I should put that on the camera. Got it. So it, it, so it, it makes a, a, a balance for, for the frequencies. Yeah. But then you can tweak, you know, you tweak the, the, the aperture, the, the camera, you know, the, the ISO. <laughs> and you have, to, you have to play a lot. Actually, to, to have a setup takes hours. Yes, hours and hours absolutely. to tweak. Absolutely. All the work you do beforehand is just as much work as you do on camera. And that's very important to do. Uh, the, Correct. The, uh, I, I think sometimes we underestimate that. So I just want to remind you, pastors, uh, just like you would prepare a program before church starts, you need to do that before you get the camera going. And it may take you a lot of time to do it. But you've got to do that if you want to come onto the stream and make the stream look as good as you'd like for it to look. David, I know we're out of time, bro. Thank you for being with us. I have one last question, and it doesn't quite have to do with lighting, but what kind of camera are you running and lens that you have on right now that you're using today? I'm using the M50, the Canon M50. Uh, the lens is the Sigma 1.4. Ooh, 1.4. Very nice. That's why okay. the, it looks blurry in the back. The lens yes. is making, 
and I bought the, the M50 because what it, it was uh, it still is the cheapest option right now. And since we're using eCam, you don't need a, a, a device, card. Mm -hmm. a capture card. You just go straight through a, a phone cable, a <laughs> USB cable. Ah, and technology. I, I like that, that you can connect the, the camera and goes straight with no capture card and and the camera is not that expensive. Right. The lens is more expensive. The the camera is, is, is I think right now it's, it's running in fifty in five hundred six hundred dollars, and hey. the Sigma lens is four hundred. Wow, that's so almost dollar for dollar. Idea. Yeah, but but we are talking about one point four years before to look a camera like this with this aperture with this effects. Mm. You're talking about ten thousand dollars, twenty thousand dollars camera. Oh, yeah. Because sometimes we say, oh, $1,000 or $500, I cannot spend that. But it depends, you know, your phone throws a really good, <laughs> really good Most image. of our phones are above $1,000 these days. Smartphones are, you know, that's average <laughs> price if you think about it. But yeah, I think, so that's, that's what I'm using right now. And the light that I have in front of me is the Godox 60 watts um, kit. It's the, my, my key light right now because of my budget. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> well, your picture is very clean. Lighting is good. The, the bokeh, that, that uh, blurry effect behind you is fantastic. So, pastors, if you're looking for a great setup in your office, in your home, in your studio, uh, you just heard of the M50 Canon with the uh, 1.4 Sigma um, lens. Uh, and you've got the Godox 60 watt light before you it's got that real soft he's got a great filler light uh and a low kelvin behind him it's kind of a yellow light he's got a dimmer on his lamp so that he could bring that lamp up just before it gets uh over well, washed out and he's got that great you said it was 60 dollars back filler led rgb light that he has that is shooting yep. against his wall and that's a great setup. You can get that in easily for you. If you're trying to do it at the church, you got to be creative and thoughtful. Uh, a great suggestion was to go to B&H, size out your, your stage, and go to B&H and see what they can do for you. Um, or you could try to get some lights and play around with it to get some nice fill. Uh, make sure that it's video stream ready so that you don't get those wonky little weird lights when you're, when you're in video. David, this was fantastic. Thank you so much for your time. Is there anything else that we missed that you needed to drop in there for us? Maybe for the more advanced, um, in, in Ecamm, the ones that, like you're using Ecamm, you have the option for camera effects. And I don't know if some of you have heard about the LUT, L-U-T. Mm -hmm. Have you heard LUTs? Yes. Okay, so you can add a LUT. For example, I have a LUT right now in my camera. If I move the LUT, you can set the the colors there's the loot is it's like a filter made digitally you yeah, can nice. add in your cameras usually they do that on the this is with no loot and this is with all the way with the loot in so i'm putting like 20 percent that's how I, I figure out in that loot and that loot it's it's free <laughs> I just, I mean, there, there's loots that you can buy it. Uh, there's kits for twenty dollars, forty dollars. You can look on YouTube, people selling it for specific presentations. Uh, they used to use the loots to fix in the lighting, and after after production, post production. So once you finish your editing, you put the loots, all the effects on the lighting. But today you can use the loot in live streaming. So I think it's amazing. Yeah, that is that is pretty awesome. Absolutely. Um, yeah, so if you're looking for them, you can find them. Where, where would you find these loots or LUTs? Uh, on Google? You can Google them. You can just look around. You can Google it. Uh, if you go to YouTube for the tutorials, usually the guys who are doing the tutorials, they sell it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's true. That's right. <laughs> and and they have good they have good ones. Um, of course, we're not looking for 
nothing fancy when I do a movie, but for preaching, for I mean, for for the for the wrinkles. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, eh? <laughs> <laughs> that helps. That helps. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the lighting has to do with that, you know. Absolutely. And of course, uh, some makeup helps with the lighting yeah. too. Uh, especially for us who sweat a lot, yeah. or for me. <laughs> or you turn your AC down to zero degrees while you're while you're on together. <laughs> this matters because in the live series, in the live service, you have interaction with the speakers, so you're engaged. But when you're online, when you're streaming, you're 2D. You're no longer 4D. You're not. You know, you can't see them, engage with them. So when you do all these things, it helps create an immersive experience for the people who are watching and listening. And you want to do that because that's as close as you can get to creating what you would normally get live. You know, if you and I are live, uh, you can preach for an hour and I can stay with you. But if you're online, because it's not as immersive as live, our time and our span is much shorter. Um, and so all of these things, having correct lighting, getting good looks, uh, being able to be you know, color and having a camera that's gonna work well, really helps engage the listener. David. Yeah, and and, and, and re regarding to that, it's a shot too. You know, usually we are using the close up, and, yeah. and that's why you need good lighting. The good thing about that is that people can see the expression on the faces, the eyes. You know, right. especially when we preach. Yeah, the bad thing is they can also see everything else. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, David. This was really uh, great. It was really practical. Uh, as you're catching this, if you have any questions, go ahead and drop it in the comments. We'll come back around and make sure that we're constantly answering. David, if anybody has any questions that they would like to shoot you directly, is there a way they can get a hold of you or, or connect with you? Yeah, Anybody they can pastors? contact me through, through, well, through you or through my phone or my email or something. Email pastormarino at msn.com. There it is, my friends. You can find him there. or You can also go to the Paramount website and connect through that way or the Paramount social media uh, Facebook group page. Or, um, you'll be, there's, there's numerous ways you can find David. And, of course, you can always reach to me. I sell his information for a very low price. And so make sure you, you contact me for that. David, thank you so much for your time. Everybody, I hope this was helpful for you all. God bless you. Have a great week. And hopefully this lit up your world a little bit today. Thank you.